It's 2025 and this is now the second episode of the year with a little bit more drone news. We've got new leaked photos of the Mavic 4 Pro. We've got pretty much guaranteed leak and launch date now of the DJI Flip. A uh, man in Utah has been volunteering his services with a drone for pet rescue. DJI is officially launched the Matrice 4 series. And of course, also in the 4s, DJI has launched the O4 Air unit for FPV pilots. We've also got a bunch of news coming out of CES 2025. Tons of stuff to talk about this week, so let's get right into it. First up, we're talking about the Mavic 4 Pro. Leak after leak after leak after week. New images of the Mavic 4 have surfaced on X by Igor Bogdanov earlier this week. If you look at the photo, the drone looks like someone took the Mavic 3 model, applied the smoothing filter in Blender, and then basically pressed print. In an updated leak of DJI Fly app, you can see the Mavic 4 as an option to choose for connecting with your controller. The Mavic 4 is looking to be one of DJI's ugliest drones yet, but if the rumor specifications are true, I don't really think it's gonna matter. In terms of specifications, it's looking like the Mavic 4 is gonna feature 52 minutes of flight time, a camera capable of 100 megapixel photos with a stepless electronic ND filter, which is huge. You don't normally see that in a drone. 6K video from the main camera, as well as potentially the usual 4K at at least 100 frames per second. Rumors are that the Mavic 4 is likely to launch in April, but maybe DJI is in a launch blitz mode right now due to the upcoming changes in government. What do you think? Maybe we'll see it sooner than April? All I know is it's gonna be an expensive spring with new drones on the horizon. Speaking of new drones, DJI has put out a teaser for Yaddle, or yet another drone launch, on their website scheduled for Tuesday, January 14th at 8 o'clock Eastern. Just FYI, like, could you like launch a drone maybe at 9 o'clock Pacific once, so I don't need to get up at 5 in the morning? New photos leaked by Quadro News, or Igor Bogdanov, and Jasper X27 Ellens show photos of the box making the drone now a real thing, quote unquote. Specs are pointing at this being a replacement potentially for the mini series, meaning that maybe we don't get a Mini 5 Pro? What do you think? I, I'm on the fence. The reality is that the Flip looks to be coming with a forward-looking obstacle avoidance, including LiDAR, but there's no sign of backwards or omnidirectional cameras, so that would mean it's gonna be a downgrade from the Mini 4 Pro. We've also got some sample images from the camera and it's looking to be pretty good. What it's looking like is the Flip's gonna be using the same 48 megapixel, one over 1.3 inch sensor that shoots video in 4K at up to 100 frames a second with that 82 degree field of view which happens to be the same field of view that you would find on the Mini 4 Pro. So probably it's a Mini 4 Pro camera on a new airframe. Flight time looks to be about 30 minutes from a 22 watt hour battery, which is slightly bigger than the 18-ish watt hour battery that's in the Mini 4 Pro for the sub 250 gram battery size. Why does the flip exist? In the USA, having a drone with propeller guards that weighs less than 250 grams or 0.55 pounds and has remote ID compliance means that you can fly that drone under FAA category one, which means no waiver is required for operations over people. This is essentially the same thing as in Canada where we have the sub 250 gram micro drone exemption that allows you to fly micro drones over people without pilot certificates. The flip will be the first in this database on the FAA side if the drone is also remote ID compliant. So let's stay tuned. This is actually a pretty big thing for the FAA. Do you think this drone's gonna be a hit? Are you a day one swiper with your credit card or are you gonna wait for a review? Let us know down below in the comments. If you like doing the DIY approach and potentially burning your house down by building your own drone from scratch like me, then probably you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the next one. Yesterday, DJI launched their O4 Air Unit series, which includes both a standard version and a pro version for when you custom build FPV drones. The key features in this include video recording that's capable of up to 4K at 60 frames a second with a half inch sensor on the standard version and a bigger one over 1.3 inch sensor on the pro, which also enables 4K at 120 frames a second. There's a new racing mode with latency that's as low as 15 milliseconds. The bigger one also has compatibility with the Avada 2 ND filters. Realistically, it's probably just an Avada 2 camera that's been put into the O4 air unit. The air unit also has its own gyro data, which means it can be exported for stabilization and it can run in both 16 by nine and four by three image formats. It also has D log M capability on the pro, which means it's got wider color gamut and like professional editing capabilities. DJI claims a pro model is good enough to record video without the need 
need for an external action camera, which is a pretty bold statement. But if the camera is as good as the Avada 2, those claims might hold water in most situations. Hit that subscribe button, by the way, to get notified when our long-term Avada 2 review comes out soon. The skimpier standard unit, so it's basically a naked board, looks like it's gonna be perfect for building nano or tiny whip drones that weigh less than 250 grams. The standard unit is gonna retail for $99 and the Pro is gonna retail for $229. We reported on it last week, of course, with all the leaks that it came out around the Matrice 4 and pretty much everything that was out there came to be true. Basically, DJI has launched what is an evolution of the Mavic 3 Enterprise series, but rebranded it to the Matrice 4 series, starting with the E for Enterprise and the T for Thermal. Standout features that weren't in the leaks were the AI subject recognition, which will count and give you real-time information about how many people, cars, birds, boats, airplanes, submarines, you name it. It has a laser rangefinders on both models. It also has an infrared illuminator for seeing better in the dark. There's now night scenes mode, which is similar to the M30 series had or the new H30N. So he's got really low, really exceptional low light performance. And now when you're using the telephoto, you've got foreground stabilization, which makes sure you can get really crisp shots, even when you're zoomed in, even in actually really high winds. I was watching a video, it was like eight meters per second, horizontal wind, and it was rock solid. That's pretty good. The drone's going to weigh in at about 1.2 kilograms, meaning you'll have to have at least a basic license or an advanced to operate in Canada, depending on where you are. And in the States, this is a seven plus thousand dollar drone. You're gonna need a part 107 to operate this thing commercially. The drone is targeted at first responders and inspection professionals that can use it for either on-site monitoring, scene mapping, thermal scanning, or potentially for search and rescue. The Matrice 4T, the thermal version, retails for $7,299 US, and the 4 Enterprise or E goes for $4,799, so just under five grand. And if history repeats itself, it's likely we're gonna see an updated multi-spectral version down the road. Also this week, DJI launched an updated RTK receiver and base station, the DRTK3 for 1350 US bucks. And it's backwards and forwards compatible with all the current DJI RTK drones. And it also has a new ground control point setup feature. Basically you can use it as a rover, like an MLID or some other GNSS receiver. In Salt Lake City, Utah, a man is volunteering his drone services to help pet owners find their furry friends after they've run away. Keith Anderson lost his dog, Oliver, for 19 days last summer, and once found, friends and family suggested maybe he should buy a drone just in case. So subsequently, he got himself a drone pilot certificate and bought a drone with a thermal vision sensor, which allows him to find animals in the dark. Now, Keith is helping others all across Utah to find their lost pets using his drone. If you're interested in getting your drone pilot certificate or to do something like this for your neighbors, you want to check out our drone pilot courses on our website at coastaldrone.co. We have the advanced, the basic, and the FAA part 107 options that can be done from the comfort of your home anytime, anywhere to get you ready for that drone pilot certificate exam. Every year, CES, Consumer Electronics Show, one of the biggest tech events of the year, takes place in Vegas and it's happening this past week. So there's the new autonomous drone that was revealed by Skyflight, which is targeted towards the mining industry and those that are gonna be working in dangerous or confined spaces. The drone features LiDAR and 360 degree obstacle avoidance, allowing it to transmit real-time data with AI-based imaging. It's small, durable, and compact, allowing it to fly in tight spaces and survive some bumps and dings as it's flying along. Next up, we're talking about a drone without propellers. It's a bladeless drone that was announced at CS, so you don't need to keep your sticky fingers away from the propellers on this one. Eris, a company based out of Hanseo University, debuted a drone that uses propulsion-based technology to deliver packages to consumers. The maximum payload limit of the drone right now is 10 kilograms, and it features a UFO-like design. So it's probably on its way to New Jersey right now. By not having blades, the noise is reduced by up to 40%. And of course, the drone's gonna use AI to navigate routes in real time. A new drone cleaning system has been unveiled from Wissen Robotics that looks to be a cleaning module that attaches to the DJI Matrice 300 and 350 series drones. The AP3-P3 is designed for building cleaning and is capable of washing at a maximum rate of up to 800 square meters per hour. The nozzle mechanism is based on human like Pliabot technology that mimics muscles and flexibility. Why am I doing this with my arm? The module weighs in about 1.3 kilograms or 2.8 pounds, just about the limit of the M300 series payloads. A drone was flying over the California Palisades fire and obviously that was restricted airspace. And unfortunately that drone was hit. This airplane was on loan from Canada. It was one of two Canadair CL 
415s, also known as super scoopers. The wing of the airplane was substantially damaged, there's a huge dent in it, but fortunately the plane was able to land safely and no one was hurt. Now that plane is grounded indefinitely and is no longer a viable firefighting asset to be put to use on this devastating fire. So let's make this clear. It's a federal crime to violate a TFR or a temporary flight restriction, the restricted airspace around wildfires. This can be up to five nautical miles away from a fire by default and up to 3,000 feet above the ground. And the Palisade specifically right now, it's from the surface to 7,000 feet above the fire. Don't go into that airspace. Now, of course, our audience, a lot of you are drone enthusiasts, you know better than this. So I'm not I'm not trying to speak to you. I'm trying to prepare a message that you can share with people that don't know any better or are willfully doing this and going against the laws. This is serious stuff, and this is something that is important to me as a Canadian helicopter pilot and as someone who's we've sent aircraft down to you guys now as Canadians to help you out. So the reality is I'm an operations manager for a Canadian helicopter operations company. I sent some of our pilots to some of the most dangerous and challenging conditions including wildfire operations. Yesterday's incident involving that drone in the plane is not only frustrating, it's infuriating. The plane, which is a critical tool in fighting fires, is now grounded due to a dented wing. Thankfully, the pilot managed to land safely, but the ripple effects of this careless act are devastating. Every wildfire flight is a calculated risk. Pilots are flying through smoky skies with low visibility and high risk scenarios. They're at low altitudes and they need razor sharp skills to be able to see what's going on and have a good sense of situational awareness. The last thing they're looking for is a one foot size drone in the sky. They are focusing on not hitting other aircraft, power lines or other hazards that are potentially in the sky. Not to mention the ground itself because they can't see it necessarily. Drones can collide with aircraft, as we saw here, or force emergency operations to shut down entirely to avoid collisions. When seconds count, shutting down operations because there's a drone flying in the air could potentially cost millions per hour in not only property damage, but operational expenses. It's, the impacts are massive when it comes to this. If you're in the air, they can't be. You're shutting down the entire wildfire suppression operation, and the fire could advance even further beyond control. And finally, what's maddening the most about all this is the reason why these drones are in the air. It's most likely for vanity. There's no reason for a consumer drone to be in the air to pump up someone's Instagram reel when other people are working hard, risking their lives to save people's belongings and to save their lives. To make fellow Canadians and aviation enthusiasts, this issue strikes particularly close to home because the plane was one of ours. Let me be clear, no photo, video or selfie in front of a fire is worth risking someone else's life, their home or their property. When you see a wildfire, keep your drones on the ground. There are professionals out there working hard to protect your livelihood and it is not worth any further risk. If you fly, we can't and the consequences could be catastrophic. I know I'm speaking to people that are passionate about drones and technology. We really appreciate the audience we have and I know that this is a really negative tone to have this is a passionate issue to me because of our circumstances. I send my friends, my family, I send people out to fly into dangerous conditions and I worry all the time about them hitting a drone. I, in the sky, I'm constantly looking out for airplanes. I'm worried about whether or not big things are gonna hit us, let alone small things. I know you guys, the audience that we have are not the people that are out doing this. So the important thing is to share this message with people that potentially might be doing something like this or considering doing something like this and understand that there are real financial and criminal consequences, not to mention the worst case scenario where something happens and a life is lost. Thank you. Please share this message. So that's it for this week. Be sure to catch our podcast this Sunday at 10 a.m. where we'll teach you how to plan and execute a drone hyperlapse shot using DJI Waypoints and some cool tricks from Google Earth Studio. In the meantime, check out last week's episode where we interview professional FPV pilot and manager of Team Canada FPV, Ignacio Romero. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and we'll see you next week. Bye.